Welcome. Welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting, meeting of the Arlington Select, Select Board, Board on Monday, Monday June 13, 2022. 2022. I'm Select I'm Board Chair Leonard Diggins, Diggins and, and I will now confirm, confirm that all members and persons anticipated, anticipated on the agenda are present, are present and can, and hear, can me. hear me. Members, members when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCorsi? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. Ashley Meyer? Yes. Great. Thank you. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with an act signed into law on February 15, 2022 that extends certain COVID-19 measures. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the, oops, uh-oh, sorry, of the, I'm going to go back a phrase. I, I lost my screen. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is on the town's website and referenced with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as there's reasonable public access that allows the public to follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all, meet, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on this website using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's set forth on tonight's agenda. I'll now turn to the next item on the agenda, which is item two, land acknowledgement. I would like to lead, read the land acknowledgement that the board supported last spring at town meeting and town meeting approved through a resolution which is also contained on the town's website. We acknowledge that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts, of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous people from whom the colony province and the Commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still in inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. I will now turn to item three on the agenda. And that is for approval garage ban on Saturday, June 18, 2022 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Wyman Terrace we have, um, do we have Thomas Davis, Davison? Or Ed we have Mandel? both Tom, we have, we have both of them if you'd like me to promote them, Mr. Chair. Oh, where's Tom? Oh, looks like Ashley's working on it. All right. Hi, good evening. Hello, Ms. Davison. This is one, Mr. Rendell. So want to tell us a little bit about your event? Sure, I think you said my name there. Ed Blondell is my name. I'm an Arlington resident of just about a year now and uh, getting active in some local events. <clears throat> I'm a volunteer with the ACAC. I might defer for a moment to commissioner from the ACAC, Tom Davison. I'm actually assisting him and uh, doing some of the logistical work um, to help recreate this last issue, the last held 2019 event. Uh, we're looking forward to a free community music show here at the Arlington Global Service Station. But Tom, I, in deference to you being a commissioner, you wanna go first and say Thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, so, so briefly, this is an event that we held uh, originally in 2019, Garage Band. It's held at Arlington um, Service Station next to um, the Walgreens in East Arlington. The first year we did it, uh, it was very successful. It was the last event after a full day of porch um, fest music. Uh, we had a great turnout, about a thousand people. Um, the problem with having so many people is that the way it was oriented, people were actually spilling out onto Massachusetts Avenue. We were trying to walk along Mass Avenue, keeping people up onto the sidewalk. So for this year's event, we wanted to reorient it towards Wyman Terrace. So it's on the side of, of the uh, gas station and uh, oriented that way. We, are, we actually were renting a stage. So um, the band will be elevated so people 
people will be, can stand further back and be able to see them still. So we're asking permission to close off one 75 foot section of Wyman Terrace. It's a circular road, so it wouldn't impact uh, any egress for anyone who lives on the street. Uh, the section I would like to block off from Mass Ave to the end of where the uh, gas station's parking lot is doesn't block any driveway. Um, so we're asking permission for that. And then uh, the cones, recycling bins and other that would be required as part of that. Um, it did some measurements um, about the space and uh, as part of the materials, he submitted some drawings. So I'll turn this back over to Ed. Anything that you'd like to add, add to that? Thank you for the time. Welcome. Thanks again. Thank you to the board for hearing us tonight. Yeah. Um, the big thing is it's a free concert. And like Tom said, it's the uh, end party uh, for Porch Fest is going to be huge. And ACAC and myself, we're trying to make Arlington fun and vibrant to live in. And this is part of it. The band's really interesting, um, family oriented, and it's, it's going to be a nice mix for all age groups. And um, but as far as logistics, um, I do have some experience putting on some shows from where I moved from. And um, like Tom said, we thought it'd be better to reorient it. And we did do some sketches and things. I'm not sure the board had a chance to look at all that. But just to repeat, we're looking just to take 75 feet on the very, very end, essentially contiguous to the, to the service station. And we did get a comment from the fire chief who said he was fine with it via email. And that seemed to be the biggest thing. We did have the station owner. We met some of the local adjoining property owners and really closest building is a commercial risk with a commercial occupancy with a, a vacant downstairs. And uh, we intend to be done with the music by eight. So we'll be cleaned up and out of there by 8.30. Um, and it's, like I said, it's not a major rock and roll band. It's more of a Cajun, Zydeco, uh, diverse type of band and uh, you know, it's not going to be any really, really loud music in the neighborhood. But just to repeat what Tom said, the sketches and stuff that outlined it, but what's great about Wyman Terrace is a loop street. So it doesn't really block any occupant from getting to their house at all. And the way we sketched that doesn't block any driveway, just the way it all lays out. So we're, we're pretty happy with it. The service station supporting it, they're moving. At first, when I was looking at the site, I was like, how does somebody do a show here? But Somehow, Abe from the service station does get all the cars waiting repairs out of there somehow. And he's, he's really excited about running it again. He was uh, supporting it in many ways, both with the place and with some funding for the band and so forth. So we feel like we've got good support. It's going to be a great weather day right now. It's always a big hit issue with running outdoor events, but the weather looks great. But we just like to get whatever the formal procedure is tidied up with you folks. And um, like Tom said, we envision some cones or some barriers, not physical, but visible markers out by the crosswalk on Mass Ave on the outside of the crosswalk and then again 75 feet into Wyman just so cars can't go through. One thing I thought I'd throw in too is if we could I'd like to get some temporary no parking signs just from say 5 30 8 30 so nobody parks in that one 75 foot section. It looks like it's open to parking there from what I can see. And then um we'll be taking care of the stage assembly and disassembly and so forth. But the third and last thing for me was um, we are renting a stage, which will make it a more professional show for the band. And um, we did send some vouchers in through ACAC channels and we're using um, Cambridge Taylor rental because Arlington Taylor didn't have anything in inventory yet. And um, we just want to be sure that whatever the controller treasurer processes is that we can assure the rental company that they're going to get their money. I mean, it's within the budget. It's been approved by ACAC, but it's just a technicality because um, I'm sure they'd like to know for sure they're, they're getting their money. That's it for my side, Tom. Thanks, Ed. Uh, and just to that last point, we've already put a uh, purchase order into into the uh, Cambridge Taylor Rental, so that part's all set. Um, if there's any questions the, the board has, uh, we'd be happy to, to answer them. Thank you. Sure. I'll turn to my colleagues and I'll ask Mrs. Mahan, that when you want to speak, if you could um, just raise your hand electronically, that'll help. And certainly if you want to go first, I mean, raise it early and I'll turn to you first. I mean, so right now I'll just look, uh, Mr. Hurd. Move approval. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Second. Uh, second for Mr. DeCourcy. Any questions, comments? Mr. I'm happy to support this. I'm sorry I'll be out of town because uh, I would love to go hear a band called the Squeeze Box Stompers. <laughs> <laughs> They are a lot of fun. Sounds like a great idea. Thank, you, thank you for doing this. And thanks for your excellent work on the commission in general. I think this is just one of the, the many uh, terrific 
events that you do for the arts in Arlington, and we're always always happy to see what you think of next. Right. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, did I hear that you said you wanted no parking signs? If it's an option, yes. Um, just for that 75 feet on, I guess, maybe the east and the west side of Wyman Terrace. Uh, right. So, so, have you gone about getting those? I mean, no, I, I guess I'm, after you vote, I, I guess I, the logistical question I have is like, does your DPW drop off cones? Um, how do we actually get the trash cans and recycling bins and cones? Um, I, in my past, we had these temporary police order, no parking, you know, 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. that we would stick in a cone on a stick or something and, and take them down once we were done and just do it. Well, if, if board assistant, or, okay, Mr. Hyman then, and then Ms. Amara. Right, okay, well, if board assistant will tell me, we were all sad. I um, just had a question. It's, yeah. a, it's a private way, correct? Why am I no, I don't believe so. Okay, if it's not, then we can reach out if the board, approves it, I can reach out to the police department and get no parking signs on either side, if that's what you're looking for. Yes, just, and just, just for that one little section, not for the entire that's street, the just from that's out, it's, as, as Ed says, that 75 foot, foot section up to the end of where the parking lot is for the uh, service station. Okay. That'd be much, much appreciated. Thank you. All right. If yeah. That's a, okay. Yeah. Just didn't want to approve it and then throw you out there and then he, yeah. we don't know what happens if next. If that's appropriate, we would reach out to the parking department and the police department to get signs set up. Okay, great. And Thanks. I don't know, would the DPW bring cones or barriers to block off the end of the street? Most of the time, we would ask that you block off the street, but we would provide the no parking. Oh, okay, we can do that. Um, and for the recycle bins and, uh, and trash bins, I know in the past the DPW has some uh, temporary, like, um, Plexi plastic ones that, that are that are foldable. Uh, we could probably pick those up ourselves and return those directly from the DPW. If there, I don't know if those are currently available the way the DPW is currently um, being um, renovated. With, with the approval of the board, I will also reach out to DPW and see if they can provide cones and recycle bins. Thank you very much. And, and I hate to ask this basic question, but APD did sign off on this, right? Um, we got signed off from Kevin Kelly, fire chief. We, we did not hear anything from the police department. You didn't hear anything from them? No. No. The, uh, the, the, I'm it, not sure. We copied certain folks. I'm not sure. Maybe, Tom, you want to go into that? Let's... Uh, yeah, they were listed as CCs on this um, submission to, to the board. I don't believe that the APT was um, directly contacted. Well, we can't have a situation where APD isn't aware of this, you know. So, so um, we're going to have to lead, just make sure that APD knows about this. Oh, yeah, Mr. Hurd. So I know when we do block party applications, which I just did one recently, that we process them because those are done through the Suckwood office, and then they just notify a APD when the streets shut down. But okay. I think the Suckwood office can just notify the APD that we approve this. Yeah. And it looks as though that they did CC the police department. Okay. They so if, not, they're probably aware, but have not got back. All right. So we'll reach out to them. Fine. Then if everyone's fine with that, you know, I feel we're being responsible about this. I mean, so, um, so on a motion from Mr. Hurd and, and a second from Mr. Corsi, and I think, as I said in the intro, we're doing a roll call vote. So Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you for your time, people. Thank you. Bye. So, item number four you know, is acceptance of gifts and or grants donations to Arlington Police Department. Mr. Heim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. Um, the Arlington Police Department received roughly $200 in, uh, not roughly, exactly $200 in a check donation from an Arlington resident. That specific resident wasn't identified uh, for me, but um, in order to uh, e uh, keep up our ongoing practice of trying to make sure that we're bringing all gifts and donations to the select board uh, for approval, both for accounting purposes and to make sure that there's nothing that the board's concerned about, it's brought for your attention tonight for your vote to receive it. 
Do folks have any questions? Approval uh, from Mr. Hurd. Second. Second from his, Mr. Mr. Helmets. <laughs> so, so uh, questions, comments? Anyone? Just to be clear, there are no conditions on this gift. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. So, hey, so on a motion from Mr. Hurd and a second from Mr. Helmets. You know, Mr. Hurd, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yeah. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Great. So now on to the consent agenda. We have for approval Arlington International Film Festival banners, yeah, and that's with April L. Rannick and Ann Alberto Guzman and reappointments. All terms to expire on June 30th, 2025 for the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, Jack Johnson, Maris Cabas Lisa, Adam McNeil, Doug Mayo Wells, Scott Smith, Christopher Tonkin. Then a request for a contractor drain layer license, DJ Morris Contracting. Then a request for one day beer and wine license on June 17th, 2022 at Robbins Memorial Garden for the Friends of the Robbins Town Garden Garden Party with Christine Harris. And number nine, request special one day beer and wine license June 18, 2022 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, Lauren Duddy. And number 10, request special one day beer and wine license June 19, 2022 at Jason Russell House for a private event, Brian Burke. So, Mr. Thomas? To move approval for the consent agenda, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hellman. A second. Thank you, Mr. Corsi's. Questions, comments? All right. So, on a motion from Mr. Hellman, then a second by Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yeah. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. Moving right along. Number 11. For approval, Class 2 license. Summer Street, Auto Care, and 34 Dudley Street with Kenneth Walsh. Mr. Walsh, what's this? Hello, Mr. Walsh. Good evening. John Leone here with Ken Walsh, the owner of Summer Street Auto LLC. <clears throat> Ken is, can unmute if he wishes. Uh, Ken's seeking a Class two auto used car sales license for location at his shop, 3436 Dudley Street for six automobiles. Um, as you can see in the application, he has a detailed out where the cars will be placed. And um, as Ken will speak, these are probably just vehicles that he'll either repair and sell or pick up and then repair and then sell. It's gonna be a add on to his business, not his total business. So if you have any questions, we'd be glad to hear from whoever has it. Thank you, Ms. Lohani. So any questions, comments, concerns? No? Nope. Yes, Ms. Hurd? Move approval. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Second. Second, Mr. Corsi. So, all right. So on a motion. For approval from Mr. Hurd and a second for Mr. Corsi. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins. I'm sorry, Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Yes, Attorney Heim. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. I'm thrown off here. It's a hybrid <laughs> meeting. That's okay. Hey, so moving on to item number 12. For, well, thank, thank you. Thank the board. Yes, you're welcome. You have nice. That's good. <laughs> Cuts it's, off way too quick. It was a nice evening, so yes, we will. Yeah. You too, Mr. Leone. <laughs> so moving on to number 12, for approval, common victual, victualer license, summer sushi, 474 Mass Ave, Jiangjing Chen. Uh, 
All right. Hi. Can you? So we uh, see you? Yes, that's me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Did, did I pronounce that All correctly? Right. No, not what? Did I pronounce that correctly? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Well, great. So, um, so you want to tell us a little bit about your business? Yes. Well, uh, actually, I, uh, I'm not African. I'm an attorney for the African. And the African is also so right there. I think that uh, there he is, Mr. Shen. And uh, this is basically a uh, common visual license application pending before the board. And uh, we are purchasing, taking over an existing uh, restaurant, so Yu Sushi, at the, this address, 474 Mass Avenue, Arlington. And uh, Mr. Chen is uh, Mr. Chen is is, the, is going to be uh, the owner and operator of this uh, restaurant. He has been working with the Bottle House uh, for the uh, permit food establishing permit, and uh, I believe we have received uh, some of his sign off from uh, several um, departments of the, of the town. And uh, um, we are happy here to an to answer all the questions that, that the board might have. Okay. Well, thank you for doing business with us, uh, Mr. Chen, or doing business in our town, Mr. Chen. So um, any questions, comments from my colleagues? Mr. DeCorsi? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move approval, um, Mr. Chen, at this when we vote favorable action. I want to wish you best of luck, and it's, it's nice to see a restaurant or a new retailer going into that block um, because it's been a difficult block for the town. So uh, thank you and best of luck. Mr. Hurd? Thank Second. you very much. Also, would like to thank you for choosing Arlington. My office is right about a block down, and I do love sushi, so uh, I'll be looking forward to your grand opening. Thank you. Um, anyone else? No? Okay. So, um, so can someone help me here? And, and what is our sister city? Uh, no, I guess. What was the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, because I mean, there are so many sushi places now in that part of town. I just kind of wonder if we have more sushi, a greater concentration of sushi restaurants, you know, than than yeah. our sister town. You know, right. you know. So, so I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, it's wonderful. Competition's great. I I tried to read the menu a little bit. You know, do you have anything with black rice? Any sushi with black rice? Mr. Chair, are you going to respond to this question? What type of uh, sushi uh, menu you have? Well, don't worry. I'm sure it's all good. Look, I'm happy. I'm happy to approve this. I'm looking I'm sorry, forward to trying. Because I'm, of our, because I'm looking forward to trying the place. Okay, so, but I so, agree with you. It's very competitive. A lot, a lot of sushi restaurants open yeah. everywhere. So you're going to have to be good. And I'm sure you will be. So, okay. <laughs> so. On, uh, I'm seeing you looking. You're also oh, no, no, I'm yeah, sorry. So, 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 um, so ask the question, and I kind of forgot the sequence. I know we have a motion from Mr. DeCourcy, and the second is from Mr. Hurd. And, uh, I did remember before. <laughs> so, so with that, Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe it's Naga Kill, by the way. Okay. Um, Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, and thank you, Mr. Chen. Mr. Uh, Diggins. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. Looking thank forward you. To, looking forward to your business. Take care. So now we move to open forum. So except in unusual circumstances, any matter present, presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision be made the night of the presentation. In accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established, it should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. So, um, Mr. Mr. Chaplain, anyone open in the audience for open forum? There are no raised hands right now, Mr. Sherman. Okay, great. I mean, so my first. Oh, I'm sorry. I hand, uh, Mr. Carl Wagner just raised his hand. Okay, great. So, Mr. Wagner. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me okay? Uh, I can, and if you could just hang on for a little bit while I start up a stopwatch here, for timing purposes. I got you. Great, thank you. 
All right, yes, Ms. Wagner, go ahead. Thank you, I'm Carl Wagner uh, of 30 Edge Hill Road. I wanted to congratulate uh, the board on uh, the choice of Adam Chapelain a long time ago. He's been a great town manager for us and we are about to see uh, Mr. Chapelain's departure and I believe we've seen the uh, director of planning already depart. I just wanted to encourage um, the volunteers that you are to continue to do great work on the select board for us. And please, please, in the process of choosing the, the future town manager, whether that's uh, one of uh, the existing people in town hall or whether it's somebody else, and in that person's inevitable choice of a director of planning, please remember that the people who live here already, the existing renters and owners, the business people, the residents really need to come first as the most important stakeholder. Um, we're facing, I believe, a five to seven million dollar uh, structural deficit after the ARPA funds go away. And there is a huge need to right size town uh, things, town, town government, uh, school budgets, unfortunately. And in general, we really need to see uh, a planning department working for the people who live here, for affordability, for open spaces, for the community that people want to be able to stay in and the community that should be affordable for people of color, people on fixed incomes, middle class people to move to. So there's a huge honor to be select board. I hope you see that you're doing a great thing for us, but also in choosing the unelected leaders that will represent uh, the voters, the taxpayers, the people who are already here. I ask you um, in the coming days and weeks to please think of us in your choices as you go forward. And again, congratulations to Mr. Chapdelaine and also to Ms. Rate. I hope that we will have uh, as good leaders uh, in, in, in our positions of power soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. And not see any more hands. We will move past, thank you, Mr. Hurt, Mr. Hollins, we'll move past this part of um, the agenda and on to item number 13 in a uh, discussion of the overnight parking pilot. And so, Mr. Um, DeCourcy and I have met with um, Chief Flaherty and, and Officer Rateau uh, last week and, and we, uh, we're discussing when to hold a forum and, and we are aiming for the 22nd and although I'm going to ask if we could consider maybe doing it on the 23rd when we meet tomorrow, uh, mainly because the MBTA is having a session I mean, regarding the best bus network redesign on the 22nd. So we may move that to the 23rd. Um, one thing that became apparent in the discussion uh, is that this is, going to be, uh, there's just a lot of elements to this, I mean, and, and one big element to it is the permit parking um, aspect of it. And we weren't thinking really about doing permit parking, but it really seems that you can't have the overnight, overnight parking pilot without having a permit parking pilot along with it because it, it's, it's so susceptible to abuse without in a, a permit parking pilot, and uh, and and, um, and it's it's going to be a pretty big endeavor, and uh, and, and um, it's it it seems more and more like we we are going to have to decide if this is something that we want to do. I mean, and so so, you know, the pilot will more so be in the way we roll it out as opposed to deciding whether or not we're gonna do it. I mean, and so I think we as a board, I mean, really have to decide if that is something that we wanna do. And I think we will have the forum be saying, okay, we are tentatively thinking about doing this. I'm not asking anyone to commit to doing that, but go to residents saying that this is something that is under serious consideration and we wanna get a sense of how it is I mean, that we do it, I mean, um, and so get input on how to do it. For example, I mean, I mean do we do um, parking only on one side of the street in alternate years, you know, um, things like that, you know. And so I'm going to turn to Mr. Corsi uh, to ask him if he concurs with what I said uh, and certainly uh, add anything and correct anything that I may have said incorrectly. Th th thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, no, I concur with what you said. We had a good... Uh, meeting and, and as you said we're meeting tomorrow again with Chief Flaherty and Officer Rateau there's a lot of information that was discussed and a lot of things that when you think about a pilot or 
doing something, as you talk about it more, you realize that there are more facets to it than, than you initial, initially realized. And I think the program that, that's planned, whether it's the 22nd or 23rd of this month, um, I'm sure we'll learn from that too in terms of what, what input we receive so that ultimately we can come back to the board as a subcommittee with, with some sort of recommendation. But I, um, I encourage um, people who are interested, who have concerns or who want to give input to, to look for the, the date of the, um, of the program, that the forum that we have, because we're going to need that input to, to put something together um, to bring back before the board. So. Um, I'm looking to see if Mrs. Mahai might have her hand up. May not. Yeah, you know, so I turn to my colleagues. That all sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you guys have it under control. And there's a lot of moving parts. That's why I think sometimes the town just wants to keep the overnight parking in place because of, of the moving parts. But it, we've talked about this for years, and there's a lot of interest in seeing if the town can go in another direction. So I look forward to what the subcommittee can come up with in conjunction with the comments that you get from the public and seeing where we can move from there with the parking pilot. So we'll stay tuned. Yes, Mr. Hubbard. Just a question, and I, I'm sure that I missed this. Which month were you talking about doing this? Oh, that that at this point is is not at all decided because for, for, I'm sorry for the I'm sorry for the oh, for, for, oh, oh, so that would be this month. Me. Okay. So, so so either next week. yeah, next week either uh, on Wednesday or Thursday. You know, and, and we'll we'll make a decision uh, tomorrow. Yeah. It'll really depend on yeah. whether we initially said the 22nd, mm -hmm. and if the 23rd is still available, we'll go for that date. Mm -hmm. And uh, although anyone can chime in now, I mean, if anyone who wants to be there, I mean, prefers one of those two dates, I mean, then then we'll go with that. You know. Yeah, yeah that that sounds good to me. Um, and, and I uh, yeah, I appreciate the work that the subcommittee is doing oh. and the thinking. I know what you mean about about. Um, you know, become, it starts to become a game of whack-a-mole, you know, where you, where you, you really, and, that, and that's exactly the process we need to go through is just see what, what flushes out. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear the thought being given to potentially permitting. I know that that is uh, an operational and even a budgetary consideration, um, but it's something that's been on my mind for a while, so I'm glad that we need, that we, I think we should at least give that a careful look and just and understand the pros and the cons of that. Mm -hmm. um, because of potential abuses, so um, just, just wanted to reinforce that. Yeah, I mean, one thing for that consideration. Yeah, one thing's apparent is that we'll have to price that, I mean, and then get, of course, the staff that can handle it. I mean, so it becomes a, a, a situation where it seems like we will have to do this later. I mean, but as I said, with all of that kind of infrastructure, for lack of a word, uh, better word, put in place, it becomes a change. I mean, uh, I mean so now it's a matter of how do we affect that change in a, in a responsible way. I mean, and part of that is, it means getting input from our residents. I mean, and, you know, this is likely to be the first forum. You know, I mean, it's going to be coming fast. You know, and so, and as people become more aware of it, I think more people want to say things and we will need to provide a means for people uh, to do that. Because in the end, I find most of the time that even if people don't agree with what you decide to do if you've given them ample t time and ability, opportunity to make their input. I mean, they respect the process. I mean, respect what, what you're doing. You know, so I even if they don't agree. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, all that sounds exactly right. Um, and you, uh, one further further suggestion to to consider, and I leave the the, the decision in your able hands, um, is. Following on the forum, I think you're right that that will get attention and people will think of questions they didn't know they had. Uh, perhaps a public comment mechanism through uh, a web form or an email uh, might, might be a good way to continue some of that input. Yeah, like an, an email address other than us five email addresses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, a, well, just a way to, to centralize the collective so that it's all, you know, it's all in one place and, and then we can be sure that when we want to get the body of public comment, we can, that, we that, can have that. That's a great idea. It's a great idea. I had, I had not thought of that and it'll be easy enough to create, I'm sure, right? <laughs> so, so we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. You know, that's a great idea. So I see Mr. Chapterling's hand up. Thank you, Mr. Dickens. Just on that point that Mr. Helmuth just made, we, we've used Google Forms or other tools a number of times, especially over the course of the pandemic, to solicit public feedback. 
I think most recently on the compilation of the ARPA plan. So if it is something that you and the board would like to use, we, we could work with the public information officer to put something together like that and then push it out to the residents. All right, great. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. And so, so this was just a, a discussion thing. You know, so um, Ms. Mahan, anything you want to say, ask? No? Okay. All right, well, we're just um, discussing it, so no need for um, anything else at this point. And so we'll move to item number 14 for discussion, the draft letter to Mass Housing concerning regarding 1021, 1025 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just as a quick refresher, primarily for the public, not really for this board, since you've seen uh, uh, higher than you've seen your fair share of 40B applications and project eligibility or site approval um, processes in the last couple of years. Uh, the, what's before the board right now is an invitation for the board to provide some comment with respect to um, the Maggiore Company's application for site approval and project eligibility for a 40B project for approximately 50 units on a one acre site uh, located at 1021 1020, through 1025 Mass Ave. Uh, this is not the same thing as the 40B hearing process, which is a lengthy process involving lots of testimony and evidence and expert analysis and back and forth um, through different uh, reviews, um, inviting departments to provide formal comment, the public, all that kind of stuff. This is a more narrow uh, scope of responsibility with respect to deciding whether the board wants to respond to Mass Housing's invitation to comment on whether or not this project should be eligible for essentially mass housing funding. Um, the scope of the inquiry is really uh, oriented towards is the site appropriate for residential development? Is the conceptual design appropriate? So it's not the fine details yet. They've essentially put together a conceptual um, project, but it's probably gonna change quite a bit even before they submit the actual comprehensive permit to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, is it financially feasible? Do they have site control? It's a much more narrow uh, set of things. So you had already received a presentation from this group who was uh, uh, good enough to come before the board in advance of asking for site approval and project eligibility for mass housing. These folks also went to the Conservation Commission for a number of working sessions, which is a positive sign that they want to solicit feedback from different um, potential stakeholders before they get too far along in the process and commit to a specific design or something that wouldn't be feasible from the CONCOM's perspective. The Conservation Commission also holds independent regulatory um, authority with respect to administration of the Wetlands Protection Act, which is separate from the 40B process. It's, it usually takes place afterwards. In theory, it could take place in parallel or before. And um, they also obviously solicited some feedback from town staff, um, like the Department of Planning and Community Development, our town engineer. So uh, you received a little while ago uh, from Kelly Linema and Jenny Rate, um, the former planning director, some memorandum and other information. What I've tried to do here is essentially based on those prior meetings, um, my understanding of the board's general sort of posture towards developments of this nature, what was presented that evening by the uh, actual uh, potential 40B applicants, a letter that primarily comments without necessarily saying the board wholeheartedly endorses this or the board opposes project eligibility here because the nature of the project is seems to be, and I don't want to put words in the board's mouth, one of those ones where it's more like the board would be interested in, you know, the applicants considering these things and having certain things be especially vetted before the Zoning Board of Appeals rather than something that says, there's no way you could ever have a residential development at this site. It's already a residential use, um, at least in part, um, or saying that um, we're concerned about the conservation elements of the site. They've taken the proactive steps of going before the Conservation Commission. There's a lot of discussion about this urban park idea. They've already started talking about tree removal. So I think. Uh, a lot of the potential concerns that the board have are, are reflected in this. Um, there's a lot of things that are gleaned from uh, the planning department, the town engineer, and uh, the conservation commission's letter. The conservation commission's letter was particularly helpful, I think, in terms of providing a sort of 
uh, table setting for the board and how it wants to treat what's probably one of the more sensitive issues in this project, and that's the removal of a fair number of trees. Um, I don't know if the, I would assume I'll let the board speak to all those issues, but again, this is about uh, project eligibility. It's not an actual uh, weighing in on the permit itself. This board has always had great um, respect for the jurisdiction of the Zoning Board of Appeals to uh, hear and make decisions about 40B cases, and this board has always been supportive and encouraged that uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, by saying that if there's any resources that are necessary to do testing to thoroughly scrutinize and vet, and vet these projects, that this board will be supportive in terms of making sure the funding is available and the resources available from town staff to do that. So if there are any questions about the letter itself, the process, I'm happy to answer them. But I've, I've tried to craft a letter here that basically outlines what is positive about the project um, as far as most of the feedback that uh, was garnered at your request and also what is concerning about the project and they might want to fine tune uh, before they submit uh, a comprehensive permit application to the CPA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. So, so you're asked. So the ask from us tonight is a vote of approval of the letter for you to send? That, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. It, you don't have to send a letter in, but um, if you want to have the select board put together official comments on the record with respect to project el eligibility before mass housing, um, this is the time to do it. And it can be supported by these more detailed memorandum. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't see it in Nova's agenda. I apologize. Um, if it, some, but there was a letter from the town engineer addressing some stormwater uh, concerns that I would also attach uh, to your letter, just so it's as comprehensive as possible. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Heim. And so I turn to my colleagues. Mr. Hurd. Mr. Helmuth. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would, uh, I would move approval. I appreciate the care that went into this letter. Thank you, Mr. Heim. And... Um, and to all the people who generated the, the source material, right, the Conservation Commission, the uh, Planning Department, and um, Town Engineer, and, and I'm sure many others. I'm really happy with the comments, uh, particularly in the areas of environmental impact, uh, environmental sustainability. I was really glad to see uh, at the very end the this, this strong suggestion that the applicant consider pursuing lead approval and using air source heat pumps and solar panels because Arlington is committed to a net, net zero uh, future, and the only way we get there is to be very careful with new development um, and do everything we can to strongly encourage and incentivize um, that. So, you know, I, I'm sure that the ZBA, if, if this lands with them, you know, we'll, we'll take a similar thing, but certainly want them to know that's our values for the town. Um, so I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of merit in kind of um, putting this these points on the public record to frame the discussion that may move forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. I'm happy to second that. Um, I think we had a good conversation with the applicants and expressed some of our concerns at that time, and I think Attorney Heim's done a great job, as always, summarizing what we said and making us sound better than we actually did at the <laughs> meeting. Um, but my I think it's a good project. I, I do like how proactive the applicants are being to work with us. I think it's a good sign of how the applicant will be as they go through the 40B process. I do still have concerns about traffic, but again, I think given that the applicant has been relatively easy to work with at this point, I think if concerns do come up, we'll be able to address that with them. So I do think this letter completely and thoroughly g summarizes our position that we had on the night of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and I, I also support the approval of the letter. Um, I want to thank Attorney Heim for the work that, that he put in. And, and uh, again, I'm repeating myself a little, uh, what others have said, but um, the Planning Department, Conservation Commission in particular, we got some excellent comments from Ms. Chapnick on, on behalf of the um, Conservation Commission. It's really helpful. And I think consistent with our practice of sending in a comment letter at the project eligibility stage, it, it makes sense to do so uh, in this case as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Ms. Mahan? All set? Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great letter too. I mean, and I'm fully supportive of sending sending it. You know, there's only 
I understand that the town very much supports this, and so it should be in the letter. I mean, I'll, I'll just say, I mean, for my own sake, I mean, you know, I just think there's too much retail, you know, and, and so, I, I, and I think retail has a hard time because there's too much retail. And so when we, I understand that we want to have more business in town. I mean, I think maybe we should look into different kinds of, of businesses, you know, uh, but, but like I said, I understand that's the posture of the town and the letter reflects that and I'm by no means I mean, asking to have it removed. It's just my way of going on the record about my concern about um, retail in general. So with that, and on a motion from um, Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Hurd, um, to send a letter, uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yeah. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Mr. Diggins, all, uh, uh, Mr. DeCourcy just sent me a, a few, uh, he caught a few uh, typos. I appreciate that. I'll make sure to get you a letter for your signature on behalf of the board first thing tomorrow morning. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. So, um, future select board meetings, uh, number 15. So, uh, so we have our next meeting on the 27th, but we have nothing programmed for July and August. And, uh, uh, so I know on the 15th, I mean, we should get some ruling from the state about remote meetings, you know, but, but, um, Chance, yeah, uh, well, who knows? Who knows what happened by the 15th, you know? Uh, just in case that impacts I me, mean, how you think about things. I mean, so. Uh, Mr. Chair, may, yes. may I just yes. make it clear to everybody? So the, the legislation providing uh, the allowance to basically have meetings virtually expires on July 15th. So for public who may be curious about what's happening, um, that could affect the board's ease of scheduling. Right. So, so the following Monday after the 27th is the 4th, so of course we won't do that. And, uh, uh, now, I know that in general uh, we do one meeting a month in July and August, and, uh, and my suggestion is going to be that hey, we do that one meeting a month, but that we also entertain the notion of doing a supplemental meeting where we just deal with minor things mostly like things that are on the consent agenda and, and approvals that don't really require I mean, all of us to deliberate on it. I think it might take the pressure off of that main meeting and, and we could then devote that meeting to more substantive uh, matters. And if we are allowed to meet virtually for that, I mean, sec that, that supplemental meeting, we'll do so. You know, so I put that out there as a possibility, you know, um, and, and so um, when we think about scheduling, and, and certainly if there isn't enough material to warrant doing that, I mean, we can just scrap that meeting. So it would be more like a, a safety meeting. Uh, so so um, I put that out there as we think about scheduling, you know. So. Just, I mean, understood. But I, I think what, part of the reason that we, that when we go to get and who knows, maybe none of us are going away, but generally we'll throw out dates and every almost every week that somebody is, has a vacation i think that's why we do the one meeting week i mean my pro in the summer meetings we've never really had much on anyways there's not too much going on in the summer around here so i mean my preference would be to try to stick with the two meetings and if we need another one we can add it but yeah i mean yeah, and the, the whole purpose of that, uh, and I guess part of the, the, the thinking about that supplemental meeting is that it wouldn't require that everyone uh, be here. In fact, we would schedule meeting things that just really don't require um, everyone to deliberate. So, but I hear you, I hear you. And so, so um, but, but as we also think about the, well, I guess, should we do that? Let's more easily think about adding a meeting. And so like, if I see the agenda really building up, meaning Nova's agenda, you know, uh, it, so that we're looking at perhaps a three hour, three and a half hour meeting. I mean, and I see that I can pull off a lot of stuff that doesn't require deliberation into another meeting where we're all not there, just three or four, you know, then I'll ask I me mean, and, and it won't be a surprise, you know, I mean, maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't, you know, I see Ms. Mahan hand up. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Traditionally, what we do is, um, as Mr. Hart said and everyone else, but I understand that you're the chair, it's your purview to add another meeting, but it's mostly just common victular or any unforeseen circumstances. So how about if we throw out July? I mean, traditionally, if we can do the third week of each month, uh -huh. that really works ideally for the select board office, so July 18th and August 22nd. Okay. Well, that, and that would open up the, the 8th if we really wanted it in August. You know, eight. Yeah. All right. You know. Okay. So the 18th of July and the 22nd of August? Yes, Mr. 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 Just a, a note for the board. I will be in Wyoming uh, from the 11th to, 20 sec, uh, to the 21st. So I'll be hard to reach for that period of time. I, there's no reason not to have a board meeting because of the town council. And a deputy town council, Mike Cunningham, can be available to respond to anything. So if there's anything that comes up in that period, I'll just make sure to give a reminder at the July meeting that uh, Attorney Cunningham will probably have to make sure that he leads the prep for the meeting. So, so even if he did the 11th, we wouldn't have here company. Okay, because that was, that was, that was a big, that was I'll be back on the 22nd. I just won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Mr. Yeah. Jim? Yes. Um, I think I mean, this plan sounds fine to me. And, you know, I think, I think your idea of, of holding open the possibility of adding a utility meeting is appealing, if for no other reason than it might help an applicant if there's a time consideration for that. Because, you know, one of the downsides of going monthly is that they have to wait longer for, for an approval. And that may not make a difference in, in many cases, but in cases where, where a special permit for, a, you know, a, a one-day event um, like we do, you know, I, I, I would be open to being one of the um, members available for such things, um, you know, if you decide to do that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and, and just to be transparent I mean, about my overall agenda, it's just to maybe do some of these utility meetings even when we get back into our fall schedule and, or, and we're doing two meetings a month because cause we, yeah, I'll tell you, once we go beyond 10 o'clock, hey, for me, it's just a, it's, um, it's more challenging than, than, than usual. I mean, so I'm thinking if maybe we could bleed off I mean, some of these utility items I mean into a meeting where just three of us are present to go through them. I mean, then it can save I mean the, our main meetings for more deliberation. So that's where I'm thinking. I mean, but but once again, I mean, um, I mean, I want people to want to do it. I mean, yes, the chair can force stuff, but that's not my style by any stretch. I mean, um, and so if there's some um, resistance, then we won't do it. I mean, but at least think about it. I mean, and maybe you know. What may not appeal now may appeal with I mean, some sleep cycles, you know. So, um, Ms. Mahad. Sorry, I got to unmute my phone. Um, if we could, Mr. Chairman, could we set at least the first meeting in September? Um, sure. And I don't have a calendar in front of me. I'll leave it to you all, but closer to the first two weeks of sure. September. Um, yeah. Um, recognizing primary day and all that. So it has yeah. to be the third, but I think well, we can set one right now just so yeah. we have it. That makes sense to me. So, so the first available date in September, the first Monday uh, would be the 12th because the fifth is the first Monday in September. That'll be Labor Day. So the first available for us would be the 12th. And, and, and um, I mean, if you want to set the second one, I'm fine with that too. I mean, I get a little antsy sometimes with September because of um, which Jewish holiday is it? Is it? Um, I think it's a Jewish holiday. 26th is Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so that would be the 26th. So, so we need to work around that. I mean, do, um, you want to work around it now? You know, hey. Wednesday meeting that week. Yeah, that would work. You're, you're, you're Mr. Chairman. You go for it. All right. So, 28th. 28th. Okay. All right. Yeah, 28th. All right. I have to thank our former colleague, Mr. Dunn, for introducing the notion of a Wednesday meeting. <laughs> I think prior to Mr. Dunn, it, no such thing existed. What, what, did, what did you do then? I think we were scheduling one time, and he was like, why don't we just do a Wednesday? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and you had never done Wednesday before then? No, I think it was always Mondays. Huh? 
I believe he was also a strong advocate for summer casual. <laughs> yes, he was. Yes. And, we, we, and we thank him for that. Great. Thank you. Thanks, folks. I mean, so um, we have three months of meetings planned, and it makes me excited, you know, because I kind of look forward to these, you know. So, but then I like the town meeting too. So, anyways, you know, um, we're on to correspondence received. So we have trucking concerns on Appleton Street by, um, from Terry Proctor, a town manager position from Beth Malopchik. Uh, comments regarding parking study analysis, Phil Goff, Eels co chair, and crosswalk on Summer Street at Victoria Road, Daniel Amstutz, senior transportation planner. I'll move receipt of 16 and refer it to the town manager, move re receipt of 17, move receipt of 18, and move receipt of 19 and refer it to the town manager. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, um, yes, Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, j just one uh, requested change to that would be uh, Mr. Amstutz uh, specifically was um, asking the board to refer number 19 to TAC. They're, they're anticipating it and they'd like to work on it if you don't mind uh, doing so. So amended. Thank you. So 19 to TAC, you said? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Second that. All right. So, uh, any questions? Yeah. So what, what I'd like to do is send 18 um, to TAC and ABAC. Uh, so, so, all right. So, okay. Mr. Chair, yes. Uh, just, just kind of an, an, uh, an ancillary comment. Since so many of these are referrals to TAC, I'd like to uh, suggest um, we had talked about earlier in the year following up uh, with TAC to get a sense for their bandwidth and turnaround time. And then we throw a lot of things at them and they right. work really hard and we are really fortunate to have them. Um, but I think a number of the consensus of the board at the time seemed to be that we need to um, find a way to you know, work with them to get a, a better information loop right. um, and a report back to where they were. And I think that you know, we communicate that request. So if um, I could ask uh, the chair or someone you to designate, designate to follow up with that. Um, as we keep adding more referrals to them, it just comes to mind. And, right. I uh, wanted to take the opportunity to, yeah. to mention that. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I definitely intend to follow through on that. I mean, next meeting, we're going to um, talk about assignments. You know, so so um, with a uh, motion I mean, to handle correspondence received as described and by Mr. Hurd and amended by me and a second by Mr. Helmuth, you know, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Right. And so now we move to item number 20 and, and some, it's that time, you know, and, uh, this is one case where I don't have anything written out. You know, uh, I will on Friday. You know, it's um, it's a hard one. You know, because we've done so much, Mr. Chaplain. We, I tried not to make these things about me. You know, but um, in this case, I mean, as a member of the select board, I mean, and your impact on my ability to understand and and um learn and, and and just enjoy the role more you know I mean I mean, I mean as I said I mean, the main reason when I was asked to run for this I mean and then I thought about why I would is that I mean, I like learning things I mean I, I like working on hard problems and I like collaborating with people and uh, through you I've learned a lot you know and and it's been really wonderful collaborating um, with you and, and figuring stuff out. And, and, and ultimately, you know, I mean, I won't say you were a therapist, you know, uh, but I certainly felt that I could ask you anything, you know, without the least amount of, of 
embarrassment about the level of sophistication or simplicity he, uh, of the question. He, and, and, uh, and then I could ask you again sometimes if I, if I couldn't quite remember the answer from, from a few months ago. And, and that's, that's been invaluable. Uh, and and I, I know how much you care about the town, and I'll save other stuff I mean, regarding the town in general and, uh, for, for Friday, yeah, but I really, really want to express my deep appreciation yeah, for all that you have done yeah, for me as a member of the board. Yeah, and I, I, I know that you have done a lot of things for the board in general, because yeah, I know how much you really care about the town. And, and, and from my discussions with you, I, and because I had such frequent discussions with you, I mean, you really get to kind of know a person um, through those discussions, and, and, and you know when someone's being sincere. I mean, they're just patterns of behavior and patterns of language. And, and so, so um, thank you very much. I mean, um, I'm really happy for you and what I see you're about to do. I mean, and so uh, it's, it's going to be a goodbye with respect to you're being a part of these meetings, but by no means is it going to be a goodbye um, for me with respect to keeping in touch because I generally keep in touch. I mean, and, and I, I have um, a lot of respect for you as I tend to do um, when I perceive someone who knows a lot more than I do. I'm really drawn to that. So, so, so <laughs> I'm going to be in touch looking for help on various things re regarding Arlington and the region. So thank you very much. And no one else has to speak, you know, uh, but if you want to, um, here's a chance. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be out of town uh, at the end of the week, so unable to attend the, the party Friday morning. Um, so, uh, but I will not try to make up for all of that with a long speech now. I will rely on my colleagues to fill in, uh, fill in the gaps. Um, but Adam, you know, the, the residents of Arlington are grateful to you for 12 fantastic years, 10 of them as town manager. Uh, I have no doubt that you leave the town a better place than it was before. And uh, I also know that that's because not only of your efforts, but the efforts of the tremendous team that you have built, um, that you have proven yourself to be a, an outstanding manager of people who are loyal to the town and to its residents and care about that. And I think that is an outstanding legacy. Um, the many, many people that you have worked with, the, the community volunteers and the residents, your availability, your honesty, your transparency, your willingness to engage anybody who wants to contribute or has a fair criticism, um, I think is also another credit and a legacy that will live on. And I think your vision in so many areas has been a real, such a benefit to the town, uh, two areas that really speak to me personally I care about and I know that you do is the area of sustainability and efficiency. You have worked really hard and made Arlington a leader in, um, in environmental sustainability and, and uh, in a way that is the envy of, of the Commonwealth and I think is another legacy that, that we will treasure. And the areas of diversity, uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. I think that you have, uh, along with those of us in the government, have really led the way and, and engaged residents honestly to, to, to walk the talk and have taken action, having made specific investments that will make us accountable and uh, always listening and never resting on our laurels in those areas because there's a lot we can do and I think that that is a value of yours that will also endure. There are many other um, and I'm not going to indulge in a catalog but, but I just wanted to call out a couple things that I often think about and will we'll look back upon. Um, for what you have done with your team here. So thank you. Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and Adam, I want to thank you for your 12 years of service to the town and, and, and 10 as town manager. And, and we've had a, a relationship. We've known each other for a long time um, through my years on finance committee. And I, and I will say, um, when you first got the job as town manager, you're only 32 years old, and people say, okay, how's he going to grow into this job, or how's he going to do in this job? And right from day one, you knocked it out of the park, and, and um, you know, whether it was coming to finance committee meetings and demonstrating your breadth of knowledge, um, more particularly the first couple years, how you um, represented the board and, and, and the town manager's office and town departments at town meeting. 
And that's one thing we've missed these past couple of years because those first few years, um, that's where you've really shown your knowledge um, and, and, and just the breadth of, of, uh, and depth of experience um, that, that you had gained in a, in a really short period of time. And it was something that as town meeting members, we really looked forward to the answers and, and, and to learning during that time period. And for me, this past year as chair, you and I worked very closely, and um, it, it was one of the best experiences I had as a, as a member of the board because we would challenge each other. I would challenge you to be a better manager. You challenged me to be a better select board member. But the other thing was the collaboration because there would be meetings that we would be going to um, and we talk about should we do it this way or that way and, and um, getting through that process we often got to what I think was the, the, the right order and we didn't always agree on everything um, but when we disagreed we talked it out and, and, and we got to a place and that's the part I'm really going to miss and, and I really appreciated um, you know, with, the, with the experience with you and, and um, we're going to learn shortly what your next step is and, and I think at this point in your life, I think it's a, it's a really good positive step for you and I, I wish you um, all the best in the future. Mr. Hurd? Well, those are a couple of tough follow-ups, but I do just want to thank you for your years of service to the town. Um, I think Mr. Helmuth just touched on this and Mr. Corsi as well, but I think he, when I look back at your tenure as town manager, what strikes me most is the thought of regional leader. The town of Arlington is a regional leader in climate resilience. The town of Arlington is regional, regional leader in how we think about our streets and traffic concerns. And I think that's, that falls right on your doorstep as a leader of the town that and it's how you inspire the people that work for you. I know you have the respect of every town employee, department head, all the way down to, you know, I don't want to come up with something that offends somebody, but every town employee loves working for you. I know everyone was sad to, see, to hear that you were moving on, but we certainly have, you know, respect your, your desire to kind of see what's next town government can wear on you and I'm sure it's there's not too many town managers that sit in the seat for 30 years anymore because you know you can there's a lot of access and um, it's you don't always get the praise that you deserve so I, I'm excited for you we are certainly sad to see you go and the town will be worse off without you at the helm but um, we certainly will stay in touch and Keep apprised of your future plans. So, thank you. And Ms. Mahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My colleagues have pretty much summed it up. Um, yes, I have the honor. Uh, although, if you ask the town manager, you might have a different word to describe it of um, working with um, the manager the longest. Uh, I, I've always appreciated your honesty. Uh, your, your breadth of knowledge, um, and, you know, it was a, sort of a new thing for me, um, serving on the board, then board of selectmen, now select board, um, to have that instant um, access to information literally at every meeting, um, coming from when I first got on the board uh, to that, um, and, and the fact that you also, uh, that, that wasn't just special treatment for members of the select board. Uh, that's certainly how you have represented the town and the town manager's office um, for the rest of the community, including with the businesses. I know, you know, I'm trying to think of something different than what my colleagues have said, and there'll be more on Friday, but I know especially um, through COVID, uh, the local businesses, you know, mom and pop, sometimes just mom or man or woman, um, they really were able to stick it out in Arlington because of the innovation um, you showed, you know, through your department heads and really, you know, doing something that had never been charted before. So I appreciate that. And also, I know you and I have had, always had ongoing conversations about um, 
none of us could do the job we do without our family and um, our family support. And um, I do appreciate and respect that um, for the job of town manager and now what you're moving on to in the future. Um, your, your family plays an important part in that. And um, so besides, you know, recharging and, and looking at perhaps a different career path, also keeping your family in mind um, it, it is very important. So I wish you nothing but success, good health, and I think we all have an idea where you might be. So if you think you're going to get away from us, especially me, you know, I'm going to accidentally bump into you in some hallway in some city close by. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. That's great. So, um, so um, we are... Mr. Chair? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, of course. I, I don't think I'll get another opportunity. And, uh, yeah. Without conflating myself with board members or their wisdom and eloquence, I'd just <laughs> love to share something from, from the perspective of a lot of town staff, which is that um, from so many of us in our perspective, Adam has been just a sterling example of what the term civil servant is meant to embody. It's a term that it sometimes lost its meaning in a more cynical age than the one in which it was born in. But in consensus and in conflict, I think so many of us have valued and respected the leadership and the way in which Adam worked so hard to represent an entire community of almost 45,000 people. The passion and perspective of five board members and 252 town meeting members um, as well as the other public servants who have enjoyed so much working with and for you, Adam. It's, uh, as Mrs. Mahan put, it's truly been an honor. And from a town council to a town manager, I will miss you very much and have very much appreciated your leadership and uh, being able to work for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. So, Ms. Mar? Okay, fine. No, no, pro no problem. No problem. No, no. I was just making. Adam, and we'll miss you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No. Yes. Uh, and then I wonder if the town manager would want to make any remarks. Uh, sure, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chaffeline. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll 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 be very brief. As a you know, it, it's 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 always it's awkward to receive uh, praise. Appreciate very much appreciated, but uh, awkward to receive and respond. But. Um, I, I guess I'll start with saying, speaking to Mrs. Mahan's points about family, you, you might see a seven-year-old's head bouncing around behind me um, on, on camera. Um, but, you know, I've been thinking a lot about what um, what I would say at a meeting tonight and what I might say on Friday, um, you know, officially leaving. And some of the thoughts that have come to mind are that, you know, when I think about it over a period of time, um, 12 years is, you know, a little bit more than a quarter of my life and 12 years is more than half of my professional, like adult w working life. So it really has been a significant amount of time and in really an incredibly happy time working here in Arlington. Um, the job is, as we all know, incredibly challenging, but it's incredibly fulfilling. Um, and then on that personal side, um, you know, coming to Arlington m married but without children and as a deputy manager and then becoming manager and starting a family in Arlington. Um, you know, a lot of great things, part and parcel to this job have happened while I've been here. And there are things that will always be with me and stick with me for the rest of my life. Um, and I think that overall, though, the thing I keep coming back to is I think about the time that I will have spent working here ties in with what a number of you um, have said, and that is the team of people, both staff and volunteers that I've had the opportunity to work with have just been absolutely extraordinary. And I feel as though I've created bonds with people that I will hopefully carry on for the rest of my life. Um, and, and, I, and I hope that is the case. I hope we, you know, collectively, we can all find the right way to keep in touch. I'm not changing my phone number, Mrs. so I'll, I'll, I'll keep you in my contact. So I'll know if it's you <laughs> looking for me. Um, but you know, the, one of the funny things about this job, I guess, or any executive or managerial level job is that transition from being a doer to being a manager and understanding that, you know, you don't do things alone. Uh, and in fact, if you're doing your job well, you aren't doing things alone. You're enabling other people to do things, and enabling other people to excel. Um, so I do, I do take 
a lot of pride or I just really appreciate when I'm when I am complimented in that manner because it's not I, I don't know that it's any of our sort of like default mindset uh, of understanding that your role is not necessarily to do anything but to help others do and I hope that could be something that my time here is remembered by um, uh, the, la the last thing I'll say is they several members alluded to I haven't um, talked about it publicly I've shared it with people one-on-one -on -one, um, and it'll become more public later this week but um, I am going to be starting a new role in September so my, my my wish when I made this decision back in March is coming true that I'll be able to take a little time over the summer and then in September I'm going to start as the deputy director of a small nonprofit called the Boston Green Ribbon Commission that convenes the city of Boston and large employers, the hospitals, the universities, cultural institutions to meet the city's climate goals by 2050. Uh, so I, I know at the board, and I know a lot of the community knows um, climate related issues are very close to my heart, both personally and professionally. So it'll be a big change, but it's, it's one that I'm excited about and hope it will you know, marry things that I'm both personally and professionally passionate about. So with that, um, Thank you a thousand times to the board for the opportunity to have worked in this capacity to work with all of you, to work with volunteers, to work with staff, and um, and thank you for the opportunity to have achieved all that we have achieved together. So thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so, so with that, uh, we'll move on to new business. Hey, uh, Ms. Mara? No new business. Mr. Hyde? No new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one item of new business. And uh, again, I uh, hate to be out of town to miss this, but this coming Saturday, uh, the Arlington Reservoir Grand Opening from the town calendar at arlingtonma.gov um, at 10 a.m. And I, uh, I hope that uh, someone or another of my colleagues might be able to go. Uh, this is a tremendous accomplishment and celebration of a uh, four to five million dollar project over a number of years. Uh, I got familiar, well familiar with it in my days with the CPA committee when we contributed to the funding. Um, but I, I think our recreation, to Park and Recreation Commission, our recreation director have, have and, and partners and contractors have managed this process in an outstanding way. I, I am frequently hearing uh, comments from residents about how well it turned out, how much how vastly improved the path is, how beautiful the playground is, even the parking lot um, and, and the beach and just everything. It's, and, and I've enjoyed, I enjoy it myself. I've taken many, many happy walks there since that was done. Um, so I would encourage residents to go to the party on Saturday and to go to the res. It's, it's tremendous. There's a brand new connector as part of that project to Lexington Community Farm next door so you can extend your, your trip and go back and see some vegetables and alpacas while you're at it. So, uh, so enjoy. Is it Corsi? Uh, no new business. Is it her? I do have that on my calendar. Um, and I'm excited for the, for the res, not to reiterate, but it, just driving by compared to what it used to be, which is a beach and grass, I, I think it will be great for the kids. And then I'm also looking forward to Porch Fest on Saturday too. So just because that we haven't had that for a few years and that's always a good time for town residents to get out and see each other. So that's it. All right. So um, new business for me, I mean, it's, it's not gonna be fun stuff, it's gonna be more work, you know? But, but hey, for some of us it's more fun, you know? So I just wanna say that one thing that I, I had been thinking about doing even before town meeting was um, um, working on thinking through how we deal with resolutions. You know, uh, and, and, uh, and that actually came up when uh, Mr. Fisher talked to us about surveillance, you know, face surveillance. I mean, and we, we recommended that he make that into a uh, resolution. You know, and, and at that point, I had a, a shift in my feelings about resolutions and thought we, we really need to figure out how it is that we kind of formally may take what comes out of resolutions and try to make it into um, transparent policy you know, and so one of the things I wanted to do was not only look at that resolution I mean, for this year and other resolutions this year but maybe go back a number of years I mean and so so I'm thinking about doing that and that kind of ties into one thing we didn't do today hey okay, but we'll do tomorrow uh, I mean next week uh, I'm sorry on the 27th is set a goals meeting you know I mean, so uh, we'll think about when we do that in July August and Ms. Mahad had actually suggested um, maybe 
reminded me to do that, and I forgot to do it tonight. You know, I mean, I see Ms. Mahan hand go up, so I'll stop and take her hand and then do my next two items. Ms. Mahan? If you're talking, I'm not hearing you. Sorry, the phone thing. Um, I just have two quick new business. Do you want to finish yours and then I'll do mine? Um, yeah, why don't you, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I skipped you. You go ahead and do yours, you know, and then I'll finish up my last two. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Um, I actually want to make the town manager do one more thing before he leaves. Uh -huh. Um, actually, two more things. Um, <laughs> one is the uh, federal funding that Kathleen Clark, uh, that the, Mr. Chaplain, um, and, you know, informed the board of that I guess Arlington is sort of the overseer of those funds. And I know um, Representative Chicolo, I'm going to say her name right, Michelle, um, has put in a request for some of those funding to go towards the town of Lexington leaf blower program. Um, which I don't know. It was my understanding that the funding that Congresswoman Clark got was more for uh, wetlands, flooding issues, climate control issues, um, things like that. Although I think Representative Chicolo was trying to say um, it's a climate control request because it would go towards the purchase of non gas powered leaf blowers or something. But anyway, if, before you go, um, and if you sent this, I apologize. I just have missed it. If you could, I, I believe it's 350000 I'm not sure. If you could just send the board sort of what the allocation is, what, what is, it's designed for, recognizing that anybody can put a request in, um, what oversight role the town of Arlington has, and, and who that is. Is it the town manager, the town manager and the planning department, town manager and something else? Um, and then to that end, um, I'd like to put a request in, perhaps through that funding, if not, um, if we could please um, find it somewhere else. Um, I know we've all been talking about the Alewife. Um, EPA recently brought the Department of Conservation and Recreation and um, the DCR informed um, the Save the Alewife Brook group that um, who su submitted a proposal that DCR has selected their proposal, which is to um, update, which is much needed, the 20-year-old master, Allied master plan um, in order to move forward. And DCR has indicated that they will um, deploy to Arlington a two-to-one matching grant. And, and I'll, I'll send this information to the town manager, as well as I'll send it to the select board office to forward to my colleagues as an FYI if you don't already have it. But uh, DCR presented Save the Allies with a cost of 75000 and said that um, if the town possibly from, they suggest uh, existing federal funding, perhaps, which is federal funding, Congresswoman Clark's allocation, if the town can come up with the 25, they'll match it with 50, which would fund what they estimate they need for a $75,000 flooding, which would um, focus on the Al White Brook flood control and, and water quality improvements, um, as well as construction of a wetland and flood water spill over at the Cattail Marsh, which is between the brook and the bike path and Thorndike Street, which is vastly needed. Somebody's going to have to um, take that on anyway. I will say that I think the reason the DCR is really moving ahead on this and appearing to be proactive, because people know, most of you probably won't, but Dan Driscoll can shiv us down my back, but um, I think where they were included with the EPA, not only notifying MWRA, Cambridge, and some of them, they also notified DCR. So I think this isn't a study just to do a study, because that drives me crazy. Um, this is something that um, they need to do. So what I'd like to do is submit this to you, Mr. Chaplain, Adam, if I could send this request to you. Um, I think DCR has to do it anyway. Um, and if you think the 25000 is not um, a viable expense, then I'll be guided by that. But, um, like, if you think EPA is going to tell them you have to do this study anyways, 
you're going to have to find the whole 75. But if you could really look this over and, and try to find a way, if you think it's feasible, I, I definitely want to see this 20-year Alwise master plan study um, on the points I brought up and the points I won't that are contained in the email. Um, but I'd really like to get this done, and um, I'm going to forward the contact names beside Kristen Anderson. There's another person from the group. I believe her last name is Greer, um, who's really been um, overseeing this with somebody from CONCOM. So, and that's my new business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I should have raised my hand sooner. No problem, in fact. I mean, I, if I'd been sharper, I mean, I had a sequence going on here, and you were next, I mean, so sorry about that. My apologies. So the next two items for me um, is I am going to do uh, committees you know, in the next meeting. So, so I'll, I'll ask Ms. Meyer to send the list around me. Um, if there's anything you want to change me or things that you definitely want to keep, you know, by all means, let, let me know. Uh, and, um, and the last thing is really committed to um, working with ARB more on housing. You know, so I plan to have some conversations with um, uh, Ms. Zemsbury, you know, uh, and try and set up something, you know, maybe a subcommittee, you know, two members from this committee, uh, from this board and two members from that board, um, working together uh, on, yes, Mr. Hurd? Sorry, I didn't mean to inter interrupt you. I was just going to say, right before COVID, we had our a joint meeting with the ARB. We had a whole plan of, I'm sure Mr. Chapterling can provide that for you, but of like an outline of a year and a half that we we're going to work together. So it would be good to maybe have another joint meeting and then kind of jump back into that outline now that we're yeah. kind of reading. Yeah. Well, thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in on you. Oh, no. Just, just, no, no, no. That's, that's fine. That's to come in sometimes they go out. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's totally fine. Totally fine. You know, and, and so and thanks for making me aware of that outline, you know. And I'll, I'll, I'll work with Mr. Chaplain to get that, and, and, and then um, see what Ms. Dunsbury has in mind. But certainly um, want to do, I mean, tr try and build some momentum and this summer. I mean, probably won't have a joint meeting this summer, I mean, but maybe plan something I mean, for, for September. want to really hit the, ball, the, the fall rolling and try, just have a plan I mean, so that hey, we can do something more meaningful you know, in the next town meeting. Not that this town meeting wasn't meaningful, but, but we could do, do more, you know. So, um, so that's, um, that's my new business. I mean, and so um, with that, um, we're going to want to head into an executive session. I mean, and so um, Mr. Helmuth, you practice, you, you learn. <laughs> I might need some help on this. Okay. <laughs> I haven't been pretty freshly coached by our expert vice chair. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I move that the board uh, adjourn to executive session for the purposes of uh, negotiations with non-union personnel, category there that I forget, um, but namely Mr. Sandy Pooler for the position of deputy town manager. Mrs. Mahan, how did I do? Thank you. Nope. Yeah. I was going to second when you're done. Sorry. Yeah just need to state whether we'll come back into open session or we'll adjourn from executive session. Mr. Thank Helmuth. you, and that we adjourn from the executive session. Second. Okay, you know, I guess, I guess my only concern this time is that I'm wondering if we might want to, no, we're, we're, gonna, we're not gonna finish up tonight. I was just thinking maybe right. There might be a chance that we finish and then we come back out, but we won't. So, okay, great. So, on a motion from Mr. Helmuth, we need to go into the executive session and a second uh, from, from Ms. Mahan, you know, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Jim, Ms. Vogt, we're now in executive session.